let's forget for a while all about financial reporting, which accounts for several non-cash elements like depreciation and accruals, and just view the company in terms of the cash inflows and outflows. When the company makes a sale, cash flows in. There are cash operating expenses like salaries and rent, but this should not include interest expense as it is a financing cash flow. We'll explain more on this later. Part of the income is taxed, so cash taxes leave the company. The leftover cash is used to make short-term net investments in working capital and long-term investments in PP&E, which we call fixed capital investments. The remaining cash is called free cash flow to the firm because it's free to pay out to the firm's investors, that is both debt holders and shareholders. The formal definition of FCFF is the cash available to all of the firm's investors after the firm buys and sells products, provides services, pays its cash operating expenses, and makes short- and long-term investments. What does the firm do with its FCFF? First, it pays the bondholders their rightful interest as these are obligations. The net cash that leaves the company for interest payment is reduced by the marginal tax rate as interest payments in many jurisdictions are tax deductible. The amount that is left is called free cash flow to equity, or FCFE. However, the firm may also pay back the principal of some of its debt or borrow more money from bondholders. We call this net borrowing. As you can see, the FCFE is the FCFF after debt financing, so the amount is only available to shareholders. Notice the word used is available and not paid out. Typically, not all of the FCFE is paid out to shareholders as dividend, as the management may want to conserve some cash for future periods. And there we have it. These are the basic definitions of FCFF and FCFE, which you have to remember. However, not many companies calculate and report their free cash flows for each period. Your job as an analyst is to infer the free cash flow from their financial reports. There are several approaches to do this, and unfortunately, you're required to know them all. The good news is, we'll teach you a methodical way to visualize and remember the relationships. The income statement starts with the revenue, which is the main source of cash input for most companies. The first thing you need to do is to establish the various profit measures, that is, how the EBITDA, EBIT and net income progress from company sales. We know that EBITDA is after operating expenses but before depreciation and amortization, so this amount of operating expenses is approximately the same as the cash expenses. EBIT is after depreciation and amortization, which is for the bulk of non-cash charges. Net income is EBIT after interest and taxes. Suppose we wish to calculate the FCFF from EBITDA. We know that EBITDA is after cash operating expenses but before taxes, so we start here such that we can cancel out cash operating expenses. First, we need to take care of taxes, which can be accounted by multiplying EBITDA by 1 minus the tax rate. However, as EBITDA is before depreciation, we should add back the depreciation tax shield. Minus working capital and fixed capital investments, we get FCFF. This is how we derive FCFF from EBITDA. Now, let's try to calculate FCFF from EBIT. Likewise, EBIT is before taxes, so we start from here. As with EBITDA, we should deduct taxes, so this term handles that. However, since EBIT is after depreciation, which is a non-cash expense, we should add it back. And likewise, account for working capital investments and fixed capital investments, we get FCFF. By now, you should know how this goes, so why don't you try to derive the formula for FCFF from the net income before we reveal it. Net income is after taxes, so we should start from here, such that we can cancel out taxes from our equation. We can see that net income is after non-cash charges, so we add them back to calculate cash flow. Likewise, 
interest expense should also be added back as they are cash that is available to debt holders. As interest expense in most jurisdictions is tax deductible, the net cash interest paid is actually reduced at the marginal tax rate. Again, we subtract working capital investments and fixed capital investments. This gives us the FCFF for the period. If there is one formula that you want to remember without taking time to derive, it is this one as it is the most frequently tested. Now, sometimes you may be asked to calculate free cash flow from CFO. Broadly, CFO is net income, add back all the non-cash charges, minus working capital investments. You can probably see where this is heading. CFO will fit right here so that we can cancel out working capital investments. As such, the only adjustment needed is to add back interest expense, which again has to be adjusted for taxes. So FCFF from CFO is simply the CFO plus interest expense minus fixed capital investments. And these are the four key equations for calculating the FCFF based on EBITDA, EBIT, net income, and CFO. Deriving the corresponding FCFE equations is simple as we can follow through from FCFF. Subtract the interest expense as these go to the debt holders, plus the net borrowing from the debt holders, which is defined as all new debt issuance minus all debt repayments for the period. If you notice, the interest expense can cancel out, further simplifying some expressions. As such, these are your equations for FCFE. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.